Praise the Lord. We're so glad you have chosen to join us for this edition of the Faith Builders broadcast with Philip and Michelle Steele. We believe that God's going to bless you today uh, as we continue on our subject that we're calling our marriage encounter. And uh, we started last week in talking about communication. Uh, but before we get into that, we'll recap briefly. Let's pray today and agree yes. that God is going to minister to you through what we say today in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you today for blessing those that are hearing and viewing this broadcast today. Father, I pray that the anointing of God would move through us and that they would receive the knowledge, the insights, the concepts, the ideas to function in a marriage made in heaven. Yes. And Lord, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we talked real briefly. Let's recap real briefly. We talked mainly last week from James 1.19, which says, Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. One translation says, Never forget that it's best to listen much and speak little. And we dealt with the issue of communication is not just talking. Yes. It's communicating. Co- communicating. So I'm it's listening and talking. Listening and talking. And it is something that as a husband and wife, we need to practice and yeah. we need to come together with the uh, mutual desire to become effective in our communication yeah. and not just, you've got to hear me and learn how to deal with it. And it's got to yeah, be my way or the I highway. Yeah. And this is, you know, this is how I am. And, um, it's something that we are allowing the Word of God to direct us yeah. and to help us to establish the marriage that God designed for us, which is a marriage made in heaven, a marriage that is uh, full of trust and respect and honor and love for each other. And, you know, that doesn't just happen yeah. because you get a marriage certificate. Yeah. It doesn't just happen yeah. because you stand in, all dressed up in a, a church full of people and say, right. I do. It's something that you've got to allow the Spirit of God to help you grow. Yeah in the Word and being a doer of the Word and you've got to come into that marriage and you've got to allow the supernatural help of God to, to make you one. Yeah. We're supposed to be one. Yeah. But if there's not any communication, that's going to be hard, to, that's gonna be hard to, to walk out. Yeah, it is. And, you know, we talked last week about something. We talked about spiritual maturity and how that's when we begin to really see our marriage begin to change. But another thing was when we made that decision to take the first 30 minutes or however long to talk to each other, to communicate when we got home. And something that uh, I didn't hit on last week, when you do that, that takes a lot of those running discussions out of the day. Yeah. Right? Where it's kind of like a drive-by discussion. <laughs> you know, because if if a person's a dad or a husband like me, I had a house full of kids. I mean, from day one, we had a house full of kids. And uh, uh, in the beginning, uh, uh, a boy and a girl, and then another girl came along, and then uh, my son uh, uh, from uh, a previous marriage came into to play, and he started coming to the house. And so on any given day when I got home, I would have four or five kids at the house and they want to play. The boys want to play GI Joes. The girls want to play. We want to jump on the trampoline. That's me, right? I'm going to come home and be with the family. So, but I knew I had to sit down and say, okay, we need to de devote this time because after this time, you're going to be busy. I'm going to be busy, but it, it's not getting it out of the way. It's putting it first place. Putting it first, making it a priority. And that communication, again, I'm not just making it a priority to come together and talk. Yeah. Not just, okay, this is our time to talk, and let me tell you what I've been talking about, been, you know, and, right. and pick up where, you know, I'd left off, you know, with something I was complaining about or, or uh, aggravated about. But no, this is the time for us to... Um, unite our hearts and, and really touch base, 
communicate with each other about some issues. Yeah, and, and it's, it's that connection. Because uh, I think, especially where a lot of husbands are concerned many times, they don't realize the importance of the fact that a woman connects much more through words. Yes. You know, uh, physical things are very important. But you are not going to want a physical touch from me if I have been using words that are not endearing. Yes. Right? Yes. That is so true. And so I have to understand that as a man, as a husband, I connect to you first through my words. And they need to be sweet words. And, and I know that that can be, well, yeah, you don't want to argue with your wife. Well, I'm not talking about arguing. Uh, any argument is not sweet <laughs> it's words. It's not going to be, yeah. I avoid arguments by using sweet words. I mean, I can sit here today on this set and say, we don't have cross words, right? Right. Uh, because we've learned uh, how to avoid it. And, and we've even grown to the point where we don't have to walk away without saying anything. We can voice our opinions to each other and you understand that my opinion's valid and I understand that your opinion's valid. I may disagree with it, but if, if a person, especially a husband, if he doesn't understand that, and women too, because no one can elevate me with their words like you. No one could decimate me with their words like you. Because I recognize that, and I recognize um, the influence that God has given in our marriage, I had to choose, even in times of disagreement, even in times that, that I may have been angry, I still refuse to use my words as a weapon against you because that is this is the time that you're vulnerable. Yeah. Why would I take my words and, and cut you down and disrespect you? You know, one, that's one of the major things that if people would learn to take these scriptures like we're talking about, being swift to hear, be ready to hear, if, and, and other scriptures that we're going to touch on, these scriptures help us um, exercise self-control in times when our flesh would go too far and, and say things that are hurtful. Yeah. And, you know, in, in my, my first husband uh, was very abusive. He, he passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, in, in that relationship, I learned how to fight with my words. I learned how to argue with my words. I learned how to hurt mm -hmm. with my words. And um, then when, when, he passed away, and then a year and a half later, we, we met and married. Um, I still thought that's how communication was done. Right. I still thought that communication was the moment we disagree, now I have a weapon in my mouth that right. I'm going to use against you, and I'm going to tear you down, and I'm going to insult you, and I'm going to threaten you, and I'm going to tell you. But one of the things that God dealt with us in our beginning of our marriage, early on, in the very beginning, we covenanted with each we other did. that no matter how angry we get, we'll never threaten to divorce the other person. Or leave or walk or out. Or leave or I'm, I'm out of here or make the, yeah. We covenanted. And in, in my first marriage, my, the, my late husband, that was all we ever did. The moment we disagreed, I'm divorcing you. I'm out of here. We, <laughs> I mean, we were all did. the time leaving, <laughs> uh, packing it up and leaving. But, but we never did that. Yeah. From the beginning, we covenanted that we would never take our words yeah. and tear each other apart, even in anger. And there were times that we were angry, but we, there was like this this solemn, even in our anger, we never crossed that line right. to, to make that, to use that D word. <laughs> well, we even, we even made the decision that, you know, and, and I've heard people say this, and I'm not saying it's wrong necessarily, but we understood something a little different. 
people say, you know, if, if you reach an impasse and you're so angry, you might just have to go walk around the block. But we made the decision that, look, when we reach that point, we're not leaving. We might have to get out of each other's presence for a minute, go in the other room, go downstairs, let's reset, right? And, and again, I, I don't want anybody to get the wrong impression. I mean, this, this wasn't long term in our marriage. I no. mean, it was, it was in the, the beginning. beginning. Uh, and because you said you came from that place of wounding with your words, and I came from the place of the louder you are, the righter you are. <laughs> the more right? correct. Yeah. yeah, the more correct you are. And, and it was just yell everybody into submission. And uh, uh, so communication was not something we were taught. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but thank God thank for God, God and His mercy. For His word. So God, when He lost communication with man, because when you don't communicate, something dies. When God lost communication with man, man died spiritually. Yes. Yes. And, and Adam did not realize what a loss of communication with God was going to mean to him. My goodness, that's so true. Right? Yes. God knew because he never wanted a lack of communication. Yes. He communed with Adam. You know, when you say commune with someone, you're communicating. Yes, and uh, God loves communication. He does. When we take what we call communion. That is communicating with each other the Lord's death, His burial, and His resurrection. And communicating with Him. And communicating with Him. He said, you show, or you tell, or you testify, or you, you put on display the Lord's victory over uh, uh, hell and death and sin when you communicate this with each other. Yes. And so when Adam lost communication with God, all right, or God lost communication with Adam, Adam died spiritually. Yes. Because he, he was no longer in communion, no longer in communication with God. Yes. And the result of that, out of that came misunderstanding, uh, distrust, cut off from God's love. All of that came because God could no longer communicate with Adam. That is so true. And, and Adam's viewpoint of God changed. His perception of God, even mankind after the fall, they were trying to find God in the worshiping trees and worshiping the right. sun and worshiping things because they were never correctly perceiving God because they lost the communication. Yeah. And so God had to put his word in a way. It, he gave us his word yeah. to, communicate to communicate with us. He began, to communicate his will to us. He began communicating yeah. with people who would respond to him. He had, he, he had a flame in a bush yeah. and Moses, he was watching to see if Moses would respond right. to the burning bush. And when he stopped, God began to communicate, communicate. with yeah. him. Yeah. And, and that communication has always been God's design for us with him. And that's why prayer is so valuable in our, our life. You use the phrase that prayer is the lungs, lungs of, of the, the Christian, Christian life. life. Yeah. But it's also that communication between husband and wife is the core or the, 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 that vital connection that oh, makes us cog. one. Yeah. yeah. E everything in a home revolves around communication. If, if I don't learn to communicate with you correctly, I will not communicate with my child correctly. And, and here's something else that, that, oh my goodness. If I don't communicate with you correctly, let's say I'm short, I'm uh, overbearing, but then with a child, I'm patient, I'm long-suffering, you know, that's a problem. Because I'm not, commu I am communicating to that child what I should be communicating to you. Yeah, and that you'll be saying, I respect this child, I love this child, but the wife will be saying, uh, excuse me? <laughs> when, 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 if I have everything in its proper order, the Bible says when it, when it talks about 
uh, uh, people going in the rapture of the church, it says everything in its proper order. So in the home, there's everything in its proper order. Yes. God communicates with us. We communicate with each other. We communicate to the kids. Yes. Everybody is respected. Everybody's honored. But everybody is respected and honored in their place. In their proper order. In their proper order. I like that. No one gets more communication from me than you. Praise God. That, 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 and, and, and that was the problem with Adam is the one he should have been communicating with the most he lost communication with and and they actually communicated more with the devil than they did with God they received his words had didn't had they? Adam and Eve been listening to God they would have taken a different stand yes yes but they weren't listening when God was communicating yes so anyway God developed his word, as you said, to, to reestablish communication with man. Good, effective communication has to be developed. It doesn't just occur. That's so true. That's so true. And I think that's why people get frustrated because they'll get married and they, they're so excited when they're dating and they are, are excited about preparing for the wedding and they're excited about the honeymoon and then they get back and they get in the normal routine of life. And then, the, then we realize it's not about just how we treated each other when we're dating. It's not just how we, the fun that we had preparing for all of these events and right. the honeymoon. But now we've got to learn how to communicate with each other about daily issues, about things that we need to make choices and plans and, and determine something together. Yeah. And, th and that's the key, together. That's what communication does. We've talked about it. We've communicated. We know what to expect. You know, we have an illustration here of Helen Keller and Ann Sullivan. Yes. And, of course, Helen Ke Keller is a very uh, famous person from history. Uh, I believe she was blind and deaf. Uh, and mute, I think. And, and mute. And they brought in Ann Sullivan to teach her how to communicate, you know, and, and history records that, of course, she did a very good job, and Helen Keller went on to be quite the figure of, of education and philosophy and, and different things, but here's the key. One had to teach communication, and one had to learn. Yes. One had to teach, and one had to learn. So in our marriage, in our marriage, both of us are teaching and both of us are learning. Yes. We're both teaching and both learning. That mutual respect will help one learn yeah. and one teach because you can tell me how you communicate. You can tell me, well, that's not what I meant. This is how I express that. You can tell me I have to be willing to recognize, you know, this is how he shows me love. This is how he, he is communicating because it's not all verbal. Yeah. Sometimes the hearing is, is hearing, you know, the, the notes that you leave for me or hearing the, um, uh, you know, the roses that you bring home to me. Hearing the, it, okay, he's, he's not just doing something. He's, he's saying talking, something. He's speaking, he's, yeah. he's speaking with that action. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think that's important because uh, uh, I'm a little different when I'm talking, explaining something. I go into story mode, but when I'm hearing, I prefer bullet points. <laughs> right? Yes. But I've had to learn, no, wait a minute, if I want you to sit through my stories, <laughs> I have to put away the bullet point desire and listen. And, and I know that could be funny, but that, that is part of me learning. And so... <laughs> here's, here's the one that, that we uh, early on recognized, is that I would never, I would never come right out and say, honey, would you take out the trash? Never. You're so... I would, I would say, this trash is almost full. <laughs> you smell that trash? <laughs> I would hint. 
that the trash needed to be taken out. And, and you would it. say, honey, just tell me to take out the trash. I so, didn't see it. Just tell me. <laughs> just I'm, tell I'm me. not ignoring it. And, and I would think, you just put something in the trash. How could you not see it? Did you see the trash is almost full? And so I just had to learn how to just, just cut right to the point and say, sweetie, would you take the <laughs> trash out? <laughs> Would you come take the trash out? Because it frustrated you more when I beat around the bush. Well, <laughs> and I, you would, it, I would, I would just hint about it, and and I would hint two or three times because you didn't get my first hint. <laughs> and we, we, and you thought she's nagging me. <laughs> and, and and when it when it really came out was the day that you were trying to get our son to do something, and it was like he was just getting more and more frustrated, and I came to you and I said, sweetheart, you are nagging him. I said, he doesn't like to be nagged any more than I do. And that's when you, now I say this, you came to the realization, wait a minute, I just need to say what I want and leave it at that. Because a man might be doing something and you'll say, uh, honey, can you take the trash out? Yeah, I'll do it in a minute. Well, he might get around to it an hour later. I mean, now, should he do it right then? Yeah. But nagging frustrates that man <laughs> because nagging is not communication. Nagging feels like uh, undue pressure to him. Disrespect. Disrespect. Yeah. And so, <laughs> thank you for bringing that <laughs> up. Day, another story. <laughs> Love will motivate you to connect. Yes. And, and it's, it's however, like you said, However that may be, my, one of my primary forms of communication is giving. Yes. If I love you, I give to you. And that's my favorite form of communication, <laughs> by the way. I know it is. <laughs> you know, I, uh, uh, when we moved into, into our house, our, our new home, uh, we moved into our home, and uh, somebody, we, we moved in not too long before your birthday, about 30 days before your birthday, and of course, I, I got you something for your birthday, of course. But somebody said, what are you getting Michelle for your birthday, for her birthday? And I said, well, here it is. And, <laughs> and there, there was the house. But my point is, that's really how I felt, was I'm going to do this because I want you to have something that you've always desired. Yes. And when I see that house, it doesn't just represent brick and mortar to me, it represents something I've done for my family. Yes. Right? Yes. And so that communication, love will prompt you and motivate you to convey, to get through to that person. Yes. Right? And so we have to make priority, make communication a priority. Yes. Schedule it. God came daily to walk in the garden. I love that. With yes, With Adam and Eve. Yes. He came in the cool of the evening. Uh, God established prayer for us to connect to him and convey with him. When he, the children of Israel were in the wilderness and they built the tabernacle, God said to Moses, he said, this is where I'm going to talk to you from. Yes. This is where I'm going to converse with you. I'm, I'm going to come down between the cherubim, and this is so beautiful, on the mercy seat. Praise and God. I'm going to convey and communicate and talk to you from a position of mercy. That tells us that when we are communicating with each other, we need to do it from a position of mercy. I love that, yes. We need to do it from a position of mercy that you may have had a bad day. I may have had a bad day. You may not know, I may not know. There's things we don't understand. But if mercy, which is by definition, the active compassion of God, right? I'm actively compassionate with you, yes. merciful in my communication, then, then we're, we're on the victory side already. Praise God. And so over and over again, we see God setting up ways to communicate with his people. Yes. The scripture where God was explaining to Moses, when I began to talk, tell them in advance, not to come running at the mountain, not to, because God thought yeah. when he began to communicate that they were going to just rush towards him. And that, that desire is something for us to uh, uh, consider that when we, we need to come together with that urgency and with that desire to, to 
communicate with each other and to hear each other's heart. Well, we're so glad you've joined us today and we're believing God that what we're saying and what we're helping you with is going to make a difference in your life. And we believe God that your marriage is going to be one made in heaven. Till we see you next time, please remember to build your faith and frame your world by the word of God. God bless you. Every believer is subject to the command of love. Learning to walk in obedience to that command is vital to our faith, and it's how we as Christians live our lives. In Pastor Still's CD series, A Believer's Walk of Love, we learn to identify the importance of walking in that love. In addition to this CD series, you will receive Pastor Michelle's CD series, Our Command in Christ. The Bible has so much to say about the authority of the believer and how love isn't a suggestion, it is a command from Jesus for all of us to walk in. Both CD series are available to you free of charge by our faithful partners and friends. To receive your gift, call us at 1-501-400-8797 or online at buildfaith.net. You can also write us at P.O. Box 242692, Little Rock, Arkansas 72223. invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can watch live streams or watch messages again to build your faith anytime you desire with trusted teaching from pastors Philip and Michelle Still as well as guest ministers and special events on our YouTube channel. Subscribe today and be ready to hear what God has for you. This is Pastor Philip Still and I want to invite you out to Little Rock's new Word of Faith Church, Faith Builders Church right here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Our address is 10500 Markham. We have services Sunday morning at 10 a.m., Sunday nights at 6 p.m., and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m., our hour of power. If you're hungry for the moving of the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of healing, the working of miracles, if you're hungry for the moving of the Holy Ghost, then we're the church for you. We value the Word of God and believe that the Word of God is the answer to all of your problems. We have a whole slate of services that are available for your family. We have nursery ministry, children's ministry, and youth ministry, all geared towards building your faith and framing your world by the Word of God. I'd really love to see you. Come and see us. And until then, God bless you. Thank you for your partnership. We have many ways that you can connect with us through your generous giving or prayers. Not only will your seed into this ministry help spread the gospel, it will produce a harvest in your own life. You can sow online, by mail, or by phone. Thank you for your faithful partnership.